Good afternoon, Pastor David. How you doing, John? Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. Today, Pastor, I'd like to share a little bit about what your message is going to be about on Sunday. Just a brief context, is there's a couple of questions I'd like to ask you regarding uh, our love for Jesus, but yet how that can spill over to a selfish ambition, even expecting special favor from the Lord. Uh, in, in your previous study last Sunday, you were just uh, ex you taught us about the rich young fool. And it came down to Jesus telling his disciples that you cannot serve two masters, mm -hmm. or even that young man, as they were asking what, they are asking about that, and Jesus was clear on that. And then uh, right after this, as we see in, in our coming up study, is that James and John now, are asking the Lord for special favor because they're asking that we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Can you share a little bit, Pastor, about the danger of, first of all, speak, uh, seeking special favor from the Lord, but how that can lead to selfish ambition? Well, I think that selfish ambition can prompt a, re <coughs> a request like that because when you look at the account as it's given to us by Matthew, Matthew points out that the one who is actually making the request is uh, the mother. So it's Salome who is making a request on behalf of her two sons, James and John. And then when you begin to look at the different portions of Scripture that speak related to who this Salome is, it turns out that she is the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus, which would make James and John his cousins. And so what they're asking for is favor but it's it's a special request related to the fact that they're related to him and so you see that kind of thing taking place and that's why not that's not the only reason why but that's a reason why the other apostles including judas got upset that they were asking for a special position in the kingdom of god and so in this uh, the study of this sunday we're going to be looking at you know the context of that how could jesus have just told them the third time as recorded in Mark that he's going to suffer, die, he's going to uh, go through all of this pain and betrayal and yet the thing that's still remaining on their mind is how can we find special favor in your kingdom? How? And, and part of it, one commentator pointed out, would have been their love for Jesus. We want to remain close to you, as close as we can, closer than anybody else. We'd like to be seated on the right hand and on the left hand, you know, in places of honor and, and all. Uh, and so a commentator was saying, you know, this this is a desire that believers ought to have is to be close to Jesus, and yet they're using an unfair advantage to try and secure for themselves a position that really was being fueled more by an ambition than for a real love. See, because if they were really sensing and loving Christ, sensing his words and loving him, they would not have been thinking at that time of their positions. They weren't. They wouldn't have been considering asking such a question when he had said, I'm going to die, I'm going to be betrayed, I'm going to be tortured. And so the other apostles who who are aware of this request get indignant, and that's when Jesus tells them what true greatness is. And I think that in our day, true greatness is measured by the wrong things, especially in the church. You know, people in the church think that 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 many think that uh, positions in the church or even the senior pastor will call him considers himself the most special member of the church and all which is an upside down way of seeing what jesus spoke of he said the the people of this world the gentiles lord it over people they 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 have a system that that pushes down the humble and elevates those who are proud and to use that as your metric for what is good or what is appropriate or right in the kingdom of God is to misunderstand what a what a servant is. The greatest in the kingdom is the one who sacrifices and and uh, I think that this is a timely message not necessarily only for the members of our church. It's a timely message for those who are in leadership, those who lead churches, who who seem to think that the more bodies they get into their their church service the greater they are. And they always have people who will prop them up saying, oh, you are so good, you walk on water, you're so important, and, and it's just destroying the church because we have made pastors into celebrity. And when you make a pastor a celebrity and, and help him to, to consider himself some great person, that's very dangerous in the body of Christ. It's very dangerous in the kingdom of God. So that's the lesson Jesus is teaching his men. 
So as Christians, we're to seek not the favor of God in terms of what we can get from it, but to seek his favor in a way that will bring glory and honor to him. Well, you know, Paul called himself a, a slave of, of the Lord. Who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We're servants. You know, when you have the right estimate of yourself, when you realize that you've been saved to serve, when you, you, you come to maturity to understand that the favor of man doesn't match the favor of God, then it helps to to change the direction of your life, the path that you're taking. And again, you know, I've I've seen the tragedy of of too many men who've been elevated to a position almost of of uh, perfection, and their their churches um, are the worse for it because they've created an idol and they don't even know, and they sustain it by their adulation and their constant praise and their boasting about and. John, you know, I was blessed to have a pastor named Chuck Smith who had a, an amazing ministry. M many churches were birthed from his, uh, great works were done, but Chuck never, never gave the impression that he thought he was something important. I remember when, in the early days when I was speaking to him and I would say, Pastor Chuck, he said, you know, I'm Chuck. You know, he didn't even like it when I referred to him in that way. He wanted to be a brother. And he told me that. He said, I'm your brother. And he was. But he was also a man who gave to me uh, lessons in humility because he truly was a shining light in the kingdom of God. But he never used that to his advantage. He was asked to be an advisor to presidents, but he said, my, uh, my role is to care for my, my sheep, to love my sheep, to minister to my church. And he, those kinds of ambitions that many seem to have today to be some mover and shaker in this world, maybe we need to remember the lesson that we'll be looking at this Sunday. Amen. And we do want to invite you guys to come out and join us at 10, 830 and 1045 this Sunday. And you'll, again, as you mentioned, we'll be going through Mark chapter 10. Uh, I like your title of Kingdom Greatness. And yeah, so invite your friends and family to come out and join us. We look forward to having you. And this evening, Pastor, we... Our church is hosting a National Day of Prayer at 7 p.m. in the chapel, and we'll be praying for various things. So I want to invite you guys to come out and join us as we even have a time of worship. Amen. And so, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing. Guys, thank you for tuning in. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you tonight and on Sunday uh, in our morning services. God bless you guys.